Can you still see it? Okay. Well, well, so well. Okay, it's 5.30. Uh, let's call this meeting order and let the uh, record show that all committee members are present. And then uh, Chip, is, uh, Chip, pardon, Chip Harrison is also attending as a, uh, as a board member. And uh, other, uh, other staff are also uh, present. So uh, with that, uh, we meet, be minutes from the uh, May 26th meeting are attached, are, are ready for your approval whenever you are ready. Our prior month was also 43, <coughs> and uh, gross revenue at three million three hundred and fifty-three thousand two hundred and twenty-one dollars. And I need my little flippy thing. Can I do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just click it. Like it? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at you. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Salaries on the hospital were at four hundred and seventy-seven thousand three hundred and four dollars, with a budget of four hundred ninety-eight thousand two dollars. Our benefits, $197,830 with a budget of $198,080. And our net revenue at $920,886 with a budget of $1,064,405. Our benchmarks, uh, salaries as a percent of net revenue, we were at 52% with a benchmark of less than 47%. Our budget to actual salaries, we were $20,698 under budget. And our ratio of salary and benefits to net revenue, we were at 73% with a benchmark of less than 65%. On the expenses, our supplies for May, $184,094 with a budget of $203,200. Our professional services were at $178,280 with a budget of $163,967. Our repairs and maintenance were at $44,884 with a budget of $28,013. And our indigent was at $37,698 with a budget of $41,341. Total expenses, um, $1,346,996 with a budget of $1,388,371. Our cash. Does that, that, that includes uh, both here and outside of the district, right? The yes, area. that's our total indigent. Yes. What, what percentage of that is in the county versus outside the county? I offhand don't know the percentage. Question. What's the percentage of indigent that we're serving inside the county versus outside the county? Well, I don't. I don't. We could have to get the number for you, but vast majority of it is uh, is in county. I would assume so. I just yeah. wondered. It yeah. would depend on, where, on you know which page of the law was going on. Like, I have the one that sees a dermatologist for skin yeah. cancer, but everybody else can take care of it. Right. Yeah. Big chunk of that is related to pharmaceutical. Yeah. Every month is what, probably 10, 10 15,000 mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals every month. Wow. Yeah. That's in county. So that's just pills that people can't afford and we're now, we've had some discussion, and I don't know if it's went beyond Ray and I and Susan talking about it, but we have talked about long term maybe having a pharmacy inside the facility here, which would basically cut the middleman out of the pharmacy court of not only the indigent, but of some of the other stuff that we do. And I think Susan was working, or somebody was working on a cost analysis to tell us whether, yeah, that's really a way we can make some money, or really it'll be just trade dollars. Yeah, we have to look at that. We have to that. See if we get 
they have a retail pharmacy in house to serve that. Okay, our cash collections versus our net revenue, we were at 92% with a benchmark of greater than 98%. And our days of cash on hand, we were at 18 with a benchmark of plus 45. Our hospital collections, $850,500, and our net revenue, $920,886. For May, our collections and other revenue, we were at $1,188,559, with expenses minus depreciation of $1,275,878, leaving us with a cash deficit of $87,319. Bringing our year-to-date collections and other revenues, $10,869,613, our expenses minus depreciation of $10,051,797, leaving us with a cash surplus of $817,816. On the consolidated side, our May collections and other revenue, $1,406,427, with expenses minus depreciation of $1,668,439, leaving us with a cash deficit of $262,012. And for year to date, um, our collections and other revenue, $12,631,529. Our expenses minus depreciation of $13,055,923. And that leaves us with a cash deficit of $374,394. That's it for the PowerPoint. Uh, behind that, you'll see the financial statements if you'd like to look at those. So. Put those over to us if you have any questions. See, our, uh, even though our, since our, our admissions were down, our hospital outpatient revenue is still still very strong, both on a monthly basis and a year to date uh, basis. Would it be better to do, instead of admits, to do average days of stay or days of stay per month? Because we're just doing admits and there's 43 but we have somebody that stays five days versus somebody that stays the average 1.8 or whatever the number is. Yeah. Doesn't, that, yeah. doesn't that affect the bottom line with the average days of stay? Yeah, the reason you do that now is, is, is the way Medicare pays us. You know, Medicare pays us on a BRG basis, so they pay us on a on a uh, on a admit basis, on a discharge basis, as opposed to a day to stay. We we can look at that, and we, we didn't show you that number back in the stats, but. Uh, that's used to we did it all all that on patient days, but whenever Medicare changed the, the payment mechanism, that's when most hospitals converted to uh, look at it all on the on the and get to discharge day. Total patient days. Yeah. So for May total patient days were 148. We get paid whether they're at three or ten, we still get paid the same amount. But what percentage are Medicaid Medicare versus what percentage are oh. insurance pay? Well, well we're at well we're at right. So this uh, discounts allowances, bad debt's still a big number there, of course. It's, that's the big contraction on it. Again, our operating expenses, both both on a uh, uh, monthly basis and a year to date basis, we've got you know significant uh, payable variances on that, and that's a, that's a good thing. There are some expenses that that are included here that that uh, that, that are insurance covered, which will be recouping a bit of that. And then uh, Michael will talk about that Thursday night at our uh, at our board meeting a little bit. But we do have some, some fairly significant, <coughs> some fairly significant damage from the uh, from the storm. Most of that caused by lightning. Uh, some by heaven, most of it. And some of that has been posted. If you look at repairs and maintenance, you'll see it's forty-four thousand eight hundred dollars. The budget of twenty eight thousand. So you can see that some of the the bills are coming in. We just haven't received. Where did we get the lightning? Uh, here. Well, <coughs> yeah, here in the you know what like, uh, surgery lights. You know we lost some surgery lights to lightning. The surgery, lightning. surgery. I think took the brunt. Yeah. We the humidifier and surgery uh, was messed up. The control control panel. Panel. water control panel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the water system, the water softener for the building was what probably the compressor the, as well. Yeah, the, it, the uh, phone system was down. The, the computer. Several computers we lost. It's kind of all the way through the building. The surgery took the hardest brunt of what. But ultimately, insurance should reimburse. Hey, the insurance is is going to reimburse us for, for we're submitting everything, waiting on approval. We've gotten a little bit, but also AC units uh, piping on the roof uh, was damaged due to hail. Um, so most of the lightning happened on the power line, giving us a voltage surge inside, or was it at our weather head? Or we, we don't really know where the initial strike was through all those storms. It was just, you know, we came in. And if all we saw was voltage, don't have a black spot, then probably yeah, was hit. Yeah. We had a few melted, some melting wiring here and there where there was a pretty significant surge that there was evidence of, but not a, you know, localized fire or spot that, that are kind of centralized to. And you'll also notice on our senior adult program, our senior care, that it is once again over over budget on revenues. Diane's here and needs a shout out to her because they've done really well. For the year, 145000 over budget on revenue. She's saving up to find a minivan. She's just crying and talks about her. If she's not careful, we can afford her own. <laughs> Statement. You'll see the uh, it's doctors out that affected our revenue, but unfavorable variance on the revenue. But again, a, a favorable variance on the uh, on the expense side, both on a monthly basis and the, uh, a year day basis for the five one eight. Behind the financials, we put in the confrontation income statement. The total revenue over expense, we are down a little bit. Um, but remember that we have Virginia Barrett over there, so all of her salaries and employee benefits, all of that is included in the expense. And she's you know, just getting started. Um, so we expect to see higher revenues over there. And Chip, per your request, we now have the OSA documents um, electronically. So I just behind the income statement. If that is, if yeah. that's, pardon me? Before everybody thinks I'm means you told me you were already doing it this way, this was really easier. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 not, it's not hard at all. Yeah. Um, it's actually quite easy. Just wanted to make sure y'all could look that over and, and see if that's okay with you. It looks a little different than it has been with the same information. The only thing I, I actually added was the uh, was the balance column, and if you go to the last page, you can see that there were four transfers made in June. So we actually uh, netted twenty, I mean about twenty thousand. We brought over from the five hundred one a to the hospital. So the balance dropped about twenty thousand dollars. You know what I'd like to say. I'd like to say something describes what each of these transfers is for. You mean besides just the old transfer or McKesson drugs? Yeah, because it's supposed to be for specific things. It's not supposed to just be a general fund that the 518 can spend it well. Okay. I'll give you a little more detail on that. Sure. Yeah. That's what I'll say.
where it says payroll tax transfer or optum transfer, um, well, you may not even know what optum is now that I think about it, but payroll tax transfer, that's okay. You're just saying where it says fund transfer, you'd like to have more information on that. Is that correct or? I wouldn't mind knowing what an optum is too. Optum is, the, um, is our HSA uh, health savings plan. We have to, you know, <coughs> it's employee benefit. Yeah. Payroll right. tax, yeah. I did start um, on the 18th of June. There's a line for McKesson Drugs. Um, Susan helped us out with the uh, clinic. We were spending a lot of money through PSS, and she's worked for the Hospital of Pharmacy, and now all the drugs are being purchased through our pharmacy. So anything that the 501A purchases, uh, since the hospital pays for it, I transfer that money over. So as you can see, it was you know a little over $2,000 for the month of May. And the payroll transfers, that's just to meet payroll for the problem winning? Yes, sir. So here's a question. Is that money that's transferred over to meet their payroll, does that fund their entire payroll in the end? Or do they have their own funds that they're making money from that they pay some of their employees from and then these cover the expenses that they need? You lost me there. Yeah, Are yeah. you saying <coughs> they're generating, yeah, they, they're a, an idiot themselves, so right. they're generating cash. Uh, and then if there's a shortfall, and the cash they have to be able to meet the payroll when we transfer that from the hospital. Sure. Yeah. Well, so I guess my question is, are we always funding their entire payroll no. every time we transfer no. funds, or is that just a portion of the payroll? What we see on OSA is supplemental to make the payroll. Absolutely, yes. But then we do transfer it the other way, too. We you do, know, because they got, they got surplus cash. Right. We transfer from the 501A to the hospital. Because the, cur the clerical people in the 501A get paid under the hospital payroll. So if there's any surplus, sure. like Ray said, we'll move it back over. Yeah. Behind the OSA are the check registers. Uh, there's three pages uh, for the hospital, and then there's one page for the 501A. That check to me was for uh, reimbursement for that camp for the chip asked me about. Right. And I gave the original receipt for it. Yeah, you got all the documents. We went issue check and we had the documentation. So I'm sure you we got Good idea. We got the documentation. Correct. Um, the f however, not if you said that. They usually show up as voided, don't they? Well, well, the ones at the yeah, the ones at the at the very top where it says hospital, there's credit. That there's an asterisk there because of course the check never doesn't you know fall in line with the next one. That that was a voided check. But at, but now that he says that, I am seeing that. If you go down a little ways, check number 85256, which I didn't notice before, there's a gap between that and 85285, which I need to find out what in the heck happened there. We, I know Sarah was having some printer problems with humidity. Some of the checks were sticking together, but they still should have shown void. So I'm not, I'll, I'll check that out and find out why there's a gap there. My apologize. Same thing at the top there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very Most of our boys and checks, though, are checks that we had written and had the money until we... Well, not, nece not necessarily. If you look on page two down towards the bottom, 
and you see, you'll see like four different voids in an office depot. Yeah. That is because our check stubs are only that big. So if we're paying numerous invoices, it, it uses actual checks, but it voids the first couple so that the information is on the check stub going to the vendor. It, it's, it seems like a huge waste of check stock, but that's the way it, that's the way it prints out. So we're not getting charged for that? So we're not getting charged we're, for that? We're not using those voids. We're, 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 we're not, not using, using three, we're six, using. one, two, three, and four. Exactly. But we did use the stubs that were attached to those checks. Therefore, those checks are completely voided. It, that's exactly right. And, they, and it, wasted. Yes. Yes. And the same thing under that, where you see Owens and Myers, we pay several several invoices. So it does, it does take up a lot of room. I see Deborah Gartrell has paid for her license services. They were. It's always nice to pay people to come to <laughs> yeah. Speaking of paying people, uh, so I had a call mm -hmm. from the chief appraiser down at the CAD. Mm -hmm. And he's not happy. Um, and so they're getting paid on time. And he says that we currently let our contract expire with them. And so technically they don't even have to go out for us right now. They can stop issuing checks to us. Um, and they're gonna st and they just had a special meeting to figure out what they're gonna start charging us for payment. We we were late on our last payment. They generally call us. We were late on our last payment. But as soon as we were notified, I hand delivered the check up to uh, to the office and you know whatever they were pleased with that. So yeah, we were late on the payment. And it is on the agenda Thursday to the approve the agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're not late now, though, right? No, no, no. It's quarterly. It's quarterly. Yeah. 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 I can't imagine Wes not letting you know. Yeah, Wes so just calls us and lets us know. Right. You know, he did that time. As soon as somebody notifies, as soon as we get notified, we cut a check and I hand delivered the same day. Yeah. He told me that he notified you guys, so that's why I know. So that's why I was going by. He said he did notify you guys uh, many times, um, and so he wouldn't have called me. He said unless. He felt like he wasn't getting a response. Didn't know about it. I'll say that. So that's why I asked you guys. It's a new job. Yep. Okay. 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 After the check registers, um, there was the physician statistical report behind that. And physician statistical and the uh, patient statistical. If you'd like to look through that and if you have any questions, you know, let us know. That's all I have, Randy. Okay. Anything else? I think I emailed you an agenda item. We put that in the next month's committee meeting agenda to discuss prioritizing the bills because some bills aren't being paid. Well, I haven't seen you sent it back. No, that wasn't uh, what I emailed you. Uh, but I'll follow up with you. Yeah, good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I assume you were out of office when it was made, so that's why I did it. I actually did the agenda, so I didn't realize. I'm I sorry. Figured. Yeah. I figured. That. I figured. I that's why I was just thought okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's not a big deal. I understand it why it happened. It's not anybody's fault. It's just something that needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. What does American Express do for us? We, we have an American Express credit card and we pay bills with it. There's some bills that you can pay online or whatever, and then we pay that off every month. Okay. So we should get a copy of that. Maybe. We also, pardon me? We should get a copy of the Amex statement for buying stuff on that. Sure, we did that. Yeah. We're in the process of changing that to from uh, Amex to another credit card. Yeah. Sure. You want to pay sure.
I'll keep looking, but I'll second you anyway, because apparently we're fixing to have another meeting. Yeah, we'll <laughs> five eighty four. Yeah, we'll do that, Jeff. All in favor? All right, meeting will return five eighty four. We're waiting up.